what they've already done is so impressive on the noise front. The other things that they'll be able to offer, we're really starting to see how this is going to all play out. Talking Joby today with Trefis and Arne. And Trefis, I have a proposition for you. Why would anyone fly with a Joby flying taxi if they can also just take an Uber for a way lower price? Why would anyone consider that option? Sure. I, I think something that, you know, we can look just to the Uber platform itself is you have several and based off of area geographically, there are some different options. But for instance, here in Los Angeles, there's almost five different options of Uber, Uber XL, Comfort, Green for EV vehicles. There's all sorts of options and without having to have too much incremental cost, so you can offer something else to, you know, whatever that end customer might be, someone who's very wealthy or somebody who is late for a job interview and that's the job that they want. Who knows what the end use case might be, but it's really the opportunity for somebody to select how and maybe how fast that they want to do. I'm, I'm sure to some extent there may be in the future where Joby isn't just going from A to B because of just how far they're reaching, where maybe you can take a stop and you, there's some discount to that, right? Just like a, a one-way ticket, or excuse me, a non-stop ticket versus, you know, one-stop ticket just flying commercially. So I think there's a lot of different things that people will be incentivized to, to spend differently, but also the whole idea of Uber versus these electric vehicles, you know, really came from the New York market where there's some helicopter use cases. That's the price point that they've started with. If you really look at the numbers, Joby will be able to get there, but it's really going to be how much of market share do they want to take? If we could even say that they're taking market share more creative it or is it just that they want to start it with some premium product because that's their market strategy with Delta or, or whomever that's how I would look at it more I'm not too stuck on what $195 or $295 means anymore gas here in LA is seven dollars consistently people don't say a word it's all relative I think in the big big scheme of things it's all relative it's definitely true and you've also shared that in your previous line of work you've seen that people are willing to pay enormous amounts of money to save just a bit of time so perhaps you can share a bit about that as well sure so in and around the New York area and even you know some extent down in Florida, money becomes less of an option versus something that's more important to them, maybe an individual, which is their time. Something that may be, you know, a two hour or three hour drive is the difference between getting there in 40 minutes is $5,000, right? That's the pain point. For some people that might not be an issue. That's again, flying a helicopter over that type of distance. Fuel becomes an issue, et cetera, but it's the same exact thing, but just replace the helicopter with the EV. You can maybe even offer something more quote unquote affordable. I don't know, $3,500, but still be making more margin than people are doing today on those helicopter flights. So I, I think that that's where you see um, some really interesting use cases. And at some point people wouldn't believe they pay, you know, $1,500 for a cell phone that, that they use and then they break it and they buy another one the next year. People spend a lot of money on things that they don't really pay attention to at the time also. People just, you know, some friends going out on a night for the town and instead of taking a car, three or four girlfriends, three or four, you know, guys jump in and Joby, everybody throws in a thousand bucks. Those things will happen too because people do that to Atlantic City. I can't tell you how many of those flights I've done. So things are going to be really interesting with how people spend money and utilize these aircraft. But the biggest thing is just going to be the time savings. What would you spend? What is your, what is your threshold? Another interesting case to quote here is the East Hamptons Airport that's currently in some legal disputes and um, should have been closed down as an official airport to reopen as a private use due to complaints about noise uh, from the people living there. I think that's just a perfect case of that. There are people who uh, wish to use this in order to prioritize to travel as efficiently as possible. And then you have uh, the residents there, the locals, that are concerned about noise and aviation traffic. Yeah, yeah here in, in Los Angeles, we have also the Santa Monica Airport and uh, it's slated to close, I believe it's um, 2026 or 2027. I mean, that was just based off of the local residents, you know, put up an ordinance or, you know, some type of legal action and they got the airport to be closed down. Sure, it might be more quiet for them, but just think what's the opportunity in the future. There's some type of tax money or revenue that the, the city is losing, right, because of closing an airport. Um, there are, are trade-offs and I think that's the other, whether it's out to the Hampton or in Manhattan. Also, these are going to be economic drivers, right? This isn't just something that's a, a nuisance or a luxury item. It's going to be something that there's a job for people, you know, at these helipads. There's going to be security, cleaning crews. There's going to be night crews. There's a lot of different things I think that contribute to it. So what they've already done is so impressive on the noise front. The other things that they'll be able to offer, we're really starting to see how this is going to all play out. Right, you're talking about earlier another conversation about prime minister or governor from one of these islands, Korea. These are just interesting use cases that might just all of a sudden make sense out of nowhere because we just have an aircraft that can do it at an affordable price point. Yeah, and it changes the economics. I mean, it's very interesting. I, you see that with Tesla supercharger. Every time when I travel back home or through Germany, there's one supercharger that's like three miles off the highway. Now, normally the people that operate a restaurant and a hotel there, they are off the main path. 
so they can capitalize on the traffic of the highway. But as people are using the app, they built a supercharger on their premises. Now they've got loads of traffic, so it also changes the economics of what is interesting and how you can capitalize. And that might also happen with EV tours that you have certain locations where you just don't have this accessibility and that changes through the, the use of EV tours.